You've probably generated G-code for your 3D printer hundreds of times, but have you ever done it in the cloud? Slicer, Cura, Simplify 3D, these are all examples of software that takes your STL and slices it into G-code, the language needed for your 3D printer. Although most of them are free, they do all need installation. There is another program, however, that runs completely on the cloud. Enter Kirimoto. Free to use and a plugin for Onshape 2. In this video, I'm going to experiment with Kirimoto for generating the G-code to print our fidget spinner body. Let's get started. Kirimoto is available as a standalone app as well as an app on Thingiverse. The option we're interested in for this video, however, is using it in Onshape. And to do that, we're going to go to the App Store. We're going to filter to Cam, scroll down and click on Kirimoto. I've already subscribed, but down here there'll be a button to subscribe. Once you've done that, you can close the App Store and come back to your part. Come down to the little plus. This is used for adding new tabs. And we're going to go to Add Application, Kirimoto. The first time you do this, it'll ask you to log in with your password. This will be a one time only. We're going to add our fidget spinner to the grid by clicking on it. All right, let's have a look around. On the left, we have our option for FDM printing, laser cutting, or CNC milling. The very first thing you'll need to do is to click on devices to set yours up. I've already set up mine for Solidoodle 2 Pro. I'll show you how I did it. We're going to start with any generic Marlin. We're going to click on that and then hit the plus. That is going to make a copy of this, which you can then set up however you need. Pay close attention to the perimeters. The main ones will be the ones at the top here. Solidoodle has a bed of 150 by 150. Its height is around about 150. I like having it a little bit lower to be safe. We're not going to tick Origin Center because in a Solidoodle Pro, 00, 0 is in the bottom left hand side. Ticking this will move it to the middle of your printer. Now here's where I run into a little bit of trouble. There's spots here to insert custom G-code. It's very common in the header for the G-code to be quite long as it preheats the bed, purges the nozzle, does things like that. The trap I fell into was thinking there was only three lines here and thinking that this looked fair enough. If you put the cursor here and hit the keyboard, you'll notice that this is quite big. However, there's no way to expand the window big enough to see everything. So leaving the cursor there, you can go Control A to select all, Control C to copy. Now we'll put it in a text editor so we can see it all in one go. Okay, this is much easier to work on. There's a couple of lines of code which just didn't suit my printer. The first one here was this one, reset all axis position. When my printer homes, it does so in the upper right hand corner, even though 00, zero is in the lower left. For it to home the axis and then think it's at 00, zero when it's actually at 150, 150, it made my extruder crash into the side as it tried to print over in an imaginary space. The first thing I needed to do to fix this was to delete this line. My printer is quite old, so it has no facility to level the bed. Here's another line that I need to get rid of. The next problem I had was with the relative positioning for the extruder. What I ended up doing was comparing it to the start G code from Simplify 3D, which works great on my printer. I noticed there was no M83 here, so I came back and I deleted the line. The rest I left as was, because I wanted to test it as close as the default settings as I could. I can now copy all of this, switch back to Kirimoto, delete what's in there, and paste in mine. Now I'm ready to hit save and move on to the next part of the program. Down the right hand side we have the slice settings. Most of these you'll be familiar with, although some of them have names that might seem a little bit strange. You can get help for any of them by hovering the mouse over and it will tell you some more details. The most common ones you'll need to tend to are the slice height, which I left at the default 0.25 millimeters. I also upped the base and top layers because I like that to make my prints a little bit stronger. I experimented with changing the bed temp and the nozzle temp to suit what I was used to printing with. I found that I needed to turn down the print speed to 60 for my old printer and my early tests for the first layer had it not sticking so I needed to turn down the shell speed to 20 just to help that adhesion. Apart from that I left everything as it stands. Hitting save here will give you the chance to name your profile and it'll still be waiting for you next time you refresh the browser. Now that we've put in our settings, we're ready to come back to the left hand side and click slice. This is one part of the slicing process because of what it does is divide everything into the vertical layers and work out where the toolpath will be. But it doesn't do anything like the in-between moves. To reach that, we then have to go to preview, which will add the rest of the detail. We have a nice toolpath preview. We can get a preview of the printing by sliding the slider back and forth. 
At this stage I was ready to hit export and save the G-code. We do have an error message here, that's because we haven't set up one of the key bits of functionality for this. You'll see here there's a button to send to Octoprint. If you use a Raspberry Pi to run your printer, you can enter the details here and that way you can send it to it without even downloading anything. There's also another piece of software from the same developer called GridPrint that works in a similar type of way. For me however, I hit download G-code and the file downloaded waiting for me. In Simplify 3D, to import already made G-code, we have to go to File, Preview G-code. We can then pick it from the menu and it will come up ready to send to the printer. I just changed to a new type of PLA that I haven't used before, so I was a little bit apprehensive about how the results might be. So how did it turn out? Well, had some issues. String City. As you can see, the perimeters are great, the top and bottom surfaces are pretty good, but the main problem is all of the stringing. To address the stringing, I came down to the advanced features and up to the retract distance. All I did was change that at this stage. I wanted to see how all the other default factors would go. I then did the usual slice, preview and export. How did the second one turn out? Well again, quite a bit of stringing. If you compare the two, you will notice that the second one is improved. There is some improvement there, just not a great deal. There is proof, however, that if we continue to push and play with the settings that we will get some good results. The second one has the same amount of stringing, except the strings are a lot finer, which means we're heading in the right direction. Comparing it to the other one, you can see the difference. Since it was a new untested PLA filament, just to be fair, I thought I'd import the model into Simplify 3D and print one straight from that. And look what we have here, more stringing. It seems the problems are with the filament and not so much the slicer. More fine tuning of the retraction is needed to get this filament working properly. So was it worthwhile? Well, it could be. If you're running an Octoprint server, then this could be really great for you. It could save you a lot of time and effort and streamline your entire process. In the next episode, we're going to use Kirimoto again to generate G-code, this time for a CNC router. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.